Evening folks, how's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, 9.38 p.m. here along the West Coast. September 10th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows, uh, let's see here, looks like a 3.2 and, well, 3.2, where are we hiding that out here? Oh, there we go. Out there across the uh, Papua New Guinea area and the green flag. Also some movement there to California right now. Uh, with a 3.6 earthquake coming in outside the Bakersfield area. That earthquake was felt uh, here within the last hour or so. A uh, number of reports coming in there to the USGS Did You Fill It site. Bakersfield even up to the uh, Wasco area. Now, this region here, uh, it's a little bit north of the area that had a five-pointer here last year. That happened around these uh, fracture areas here, unnamed faults here from the 1952 uh, fault fractures. Uh, it does look like there's a little aftershock activity in there as well. Um, this is an area where I would see strain transfer off of when things are locked and loaded across a certain area. And of course the San Andreas Fault we all know is well locked and loaded. Uh, but watch that closely here. Uh, a number of earthquakes here in Southern California today, including some movement out in the Ludlow area. Looks like that 3.1 came in last night, uh, but a 1.6 so far today. Uh, just keep an eye on it. We're definitely uh, coming up here, I think, for some big earthquake activity. Uh, further up the line here along the San Andreas Fault, the creeping section, a couple of smaller earthquakes, including a 2.8 up there around the Pinnacles area. So technically, uh, 2.5 map and above, pretty active out here for a daily count. Had a couple up north, and then uh, the newer activity down south here. So things are uh, on the move up there across Northern California. The activity that was stirring up out here yesterday um, and the day before uh, is, uh, has come to a halt, surprisingly. Now, we've seen a, a decent amount of earthquake activity out here. Uh, the largest being a 5.1, and I do want to point out something here. Uh, someone mentioned that there's uh, technically no way that a earthquake on a fault system could trigger strain on another fault nearby or even at a distance. I don't know what book they've been reading or what school they went to, but they are completely wrong because everything is about transfer of strain out here. Uh, we don't get these ridges building up for nothing, right? This is a spreading seafloor center. Earthquake activity that was striking out here. Um, yesterday was... Uh, that was yesterday, right? That was on the 8th. Okay, so technically two days ago. But we've seen how this advanced here. We watched earthquake activity bouncing back and forth here between Northern California and up here around the Gorda Ridges. Spreading seafloor center, adding further strain out here across the Cascadia subduction zone. That's a, the strain transfer. That's how you get areas of built-up strain out here. I mean, why else is uh, this Gorda plate here being subducted underneath the region? I know the North American plate and general movement here has a lot to do with it, but this right here is why we see um, partial ruptures more often than the uh, complete rupture because of the... Uh, accumulation slip rate is higher across the southern end because of this activity. Um, I do want to double check the trimmer map here tonight. Uh, the slow slip events. Let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, there we go. Back to being elevated out there across the southern end. 162 epicenters. So uh, let's see here. No earthquake activity. Trimmer counts today. Yesterday's trimmer count was uh, completely halted. That was inter That's interesting here. So this is from yesterday. And there was technically... Was there any aftershock activity there yesterday? Uh, no, that, that was from yesterday. Where was I seeing the 8th at? Not for sure where, but yeah, this, this is from yesterday, 5.1 and a 4.9. So I'll take that back. It wasn't two days ago. Unless my eyes are playing tricks on me here. But yeah, so this was yesterday. Now notice the trimmer counts here 
came to a halt yesterday, and that's when we've seen the elevated earthquake activity back here. Uh, it may just be a coincidence here. And now today, no earthquake activity offshore, and things are um, um, back at the slow slip events, elevated level out here across the southern end again. So definitely some interesting activity. I do think, um, you know, it's it's been more active than uh, normal out here as of late. Uh, I was running across this page here, and I know I showed the, um, which map is that? It's going to be this one right here. I know I showed something similar last night about the 6,000-year mark how 93% of the known earthquakes along the Cascadia um, were uh, less than 325 years. There was only two intervals above 325 years. We're at, we are at 325 years right now since uh, 1700, the last big nine pointer along the Cascadia. But if we look at just the last 4,000 years, 100% um, of known times between the earthquakes there in the last 4,000 years along the Cascadia, the longest interval was 291 years. So we are surpassed that in the last 4,000 years. There was 19 intervals there where the earthquakes and events struck under 325 years. The longest being 291. So that should tell you something right there. I do think we need to watch this closely. That's why I'm paying attention to what goes on while there's no tremor activity? It seems like elevated activity was back building out here. Uh, a lot going on underneath this region with no tremor counts down here. Now there's no earthquake activity. That completely came to halt, but tremor activity picked up. So definitely some interesting activity out there. I do think we need to be prepared. Uh, a couple earthquakes there around Mount St. Helens earlier. Uh, let's go double check that. I want to see... Real quick, what's going on up there? Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity this morning. Let's see if anything's kicked up through the afternoon. There's a that's a a well-defined earthquake there, about eight o'clock or so. Um, that is eight o'clock this morning. So this earthquake will probably not get reported until tomorrow morning. Uh, but that's definitely a legit earthquake. Here's the last afternoon, this afternoon and early evening time period. There's still another bunch of earthquakes out here. Uh, and I wanted to show you guys here. They had, um, so this is, they're showing this as a very negative quake at somewhat of a, a deeper level, a point two at 0, 8, 10. So 8, 10 in the morning would be um, 8, 10 in the morning. Here's the 8, 10 time frame probably right about here that little earthquake is a point two negative point two so that's a very small quake but what about all these other ones you know there's maybe 30 or 40 earthquakes on this map here and this is mount st helens this isn't where the swarm was happening there that big time earthquake swarm unprecedented earthquake swarm that is that was up at mount rainier so we got two active volcanoes there in terms of earthquake activity uh there's mount rainier they're only showing one earthquake from this morning, two o'clock in the morning here, but I know that's not all that true. Um, let's go ahead and check Mount Rainier, the seismograph stations real quick. There's a definitely a legit earthquake. Um, and as you can see, is that the one at eight o'clock this morning? No, that was at two o'clock. So two o'clock this morning is going to be that little spike right there, right? Yeah, 206, that would match this time period right here. Somewhere around there. So what about all these other quakes in here? You know, a couple different earthquakes that I can see. So I don't know. There's definitely some earthquake activity showing up there. I'm watching it closely, keeping an eye on it. All right. Uh, Utah, what's shaking out there in Utah? 4.1. See, I've noticed all these interesting earthquakes here over the last week or so. Swarms in Nevada. Um, you, uh, this is somewhat unusual down there across southern Idaho. In the last week, there's been a bunch of swarming up here across the Hebgen Lake area and westward. Uh, just an overall sign here, a pattern of elevated seismic activity inland. 
even though it's a ways away from the plate boundaries here, the Cascadia and the San Andreas Fault. Real quick on that. Real quick on that. Um, there is... I was reading through here. If you haven't got a chance to read it yet, um, is that in a lot of the past events here, there's a lot of information here, but the majority of the events that happen along the Cascadia in terms of big earthquakes trigger the San Andreas Fault. Um, Cascadia triggers the northern San Andreas Fault, not the other way around. You can't say that uh, the... San Andreas triggers the Cascadia. Um, but this is very interesting here. Um, and if that rings true, that could be a bad sign there because well, the, the majority of the Cascadia, of the uh, San Andreas Fault is, you know, fairly well locked and loaded. Um, 1906, that is somewhat recent in terms of earthquake history here along the northern segment. They're mentioning here that it's not really likely, a little bit unlikely there that we would see that happen, but you never know. It's possible with a Cascadia rupture. Um, likely there across the extreme southern end there. That's well strained out there. But uh, anyway, this is a, man, I tell you what, there's so much information out here uh, with regards to the Cascadia and this San Andreas Fault connection. But check that out. It's called survivingcascadia.com. It's worth the hour, a couple hours of reading time out there. All right, anyway, we, we're seeing it. We got a lot of strain out there because of this, the uh, interaction there along this, the uh, Cascadia and also the West Coast here. Some movement in the last week way at the northern end as well. Uh, not so much going on up there today, but we'll continue to watch that. Uh, this earthquake out in Utah is south of the Ashley National Forest. I don't know if there's any... Um, mining operations or oil fields out there i am just kind of looking here on the satellite view it's 40 that is crazy is that right oh it is so that's a little odd it has been reviewed but look at the depth of the earthquake 42 miles underneath this area that's odd very odd I don't know if there's any documented historical earthquakes out here in this area. Not a whole lot. A little bit to the west here, but those are, uh, looks like 4.5 and above. But not a whole lot of documented uh, earthquake activity out there. So uh, that's why I'm saying there's a lot of strange events here happening. Swarms in Nevada, various other earthquakes out here. It's just, it's, uh, I think it's all a sign here of what's to come across the west coast. Um... Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here for now, but uh, I wonder if that four-pointer showed up with it being so deep like that. I want to double-check here and see. Um, yeah, that would be that would be um, 2357 UTC time. Uh, 23, 2357 is going to be going to be the start of that red and then it goes over here to the blue so it's definitely a deep earthquake and a distance there from the Yellowstone station not a whole lot of activity there across Yellowstone for now a couple earthquakes there early in the morning but uh, I don't see any unusual activity there across Yellowstone for now but definitely something brewing way deep underneath the Utah area oil fields of Texas still rocking and rolling um, let's see was that another earthquake no that's the same thing Don't see any uh, drilling operations out here. Uh, what is that? Not for sure what that is. But uh, anyway, let's see what else we got here across the globe. The world, really, um, not too much going on globally. There's some activity uh, across the Kro Cam Chatka there, typical crunch zone there showing activity. Um, but I still feel like we're at a standstill waiting for something big to happen out here. Some movement out there around the Mediterranean, 3.8 included out there. 
somewhat elevated. Uh, but I, I don't know. I've got my eyes over here across either the Western Pacific or uh, the West Coast over here. Just seems like that's where primarily where all the bigger earthquakes are happening right now. Not a whole lot further south along the Pacific, so just uh, be on guard. All right, space weather activity. Here's the big test. This is the big test, so to speak. We got a massive coronal hole that's facing us. Uh, a lot of folks out there saying when this happens, get ready for big earthquake activity somewhere around the globe. You know, and that's solid information that they're stating. We'll see what happens here. I'm a little bit skeptical on that. I do think there's a relationship between space weather activity, pro mainly protons, I believe, uh, when they slam into the Earth. But we'll see how this magnetic lines here that shoot out from the coronal hole affect the Earth uh, tonight, tomorrow, and probably the next couple days. We'll see what happens. But the high-speed solar wind stream flowing from that, it will reach us there in about probably 72 hours or so. Um, so we don't, it doesn't, I don't see anything yet in the forecast, but a couple nights from now, a few nights from now, we'll have uh, maybe some Aurora amplification just due to that being squarely, um, center disc there of the sun. So that should be geo effective. Certainly no major solar flares for now. In fact, things are dropping like a rock in that department. A little bit of aurora activity right now. I'm not for sure exactly where that's coming from. It might just be some regular high-speed solar wind stream. Uh, let's see. Nothing major going on. Had some storms out here across Northern California. It completely skipped me for whatever reason. I was really hoping to get some showers and thunderstorms here. But uh, Redding, Anderson had some. Uh, up above, Chico had some as well. But... Let's see what we got here for long range models in terms of hurricane activity. We'll put this into motion here and see what we got coming into the Gulf for the Atlantic. You know, it's been a, you know, this, this month right now is the peak of hurricane season. And we have yet to have one come into the Gulf here or into the, uh, the Atlantic across the East Coast. A little odd to say the least. Not a whole lot right now happening, but... Uh, We'll keep checking back on that. All right, folks, I am pretty tired. I don't know, something draining on me today. A uh, little earthquake there in Russia. Everything else looks pretty quiet for now. I'm going to call it night. Um, don't forget here in 10 days on the 20th of this month, we'll do a member drawing. Uh, we'll be picking out two lucky winners as long as we're above that 100 mark, which I believe we are. I think we're at 110 members or so, uh, maybe more now, but we'll pick out two. And um, we'll give away some cash prizes and whatnot. So jump on board, be a member today, and win some cool stuff. You also get some uh, extra emojis and uh, member-only videos. And most of the member-only videos are not really earthquake-related. They're more of a personal what we're doing here on this end, uh, here on the, the property, and maybe some barbecue stuff that I'm cooking for that night. And just some interesting stuff that, you know, maybe not everyone finds uh, like they want to view it. But it, it's an option there for our members. All right. I am ready for some sleep. We'll see you guys out here for the Thursday morning update.